Hi there. In this video, I want to define what it means to differentiate with respect to a vector. So the idea is that we're quite capable of doing differentiating with respect to some sort of scalar, but we haven't defined what we mean by differentiating with respect to a vector. And the reason that I'm introducing this particular concept now is because when we write down our econometric equation in matrix form, then it turns out that in order to derive our least squared estimates of beta, which in this case is a vector, we have to differentiate uh, some sort of sum of squares with respect to a vector. So if we're differentiating with respect to a vector, we better know what we mean by that. Okay, so let's think about a particular example whereby I have a vector x, which has sort of p entries. So it has sort of x1, x2, all the way through to xp. And similarly, there is a vector a, which we define as similarly having p entries. So a1, a2, all the way through to ap. So in both of these cases, I hope you can see that this is a p by one vector, and so is this. So they both got the same sort of size, the same dimensions. So let's say we form something which is made by taking the transpose of x and then multiplying it by the vector a. And we're calling this y. So what, what dimensions does y have? Well, we can do this by just sort of thinking about the dimensions of each of these things in our right-hand side. So what dimensions does x transpose have? Well, it's just a one by p because I've sort of transposed my um, column of entries and now it's just a row of p entries. Okay, so that's one by p and our a vector is still p by one. So I've got a one by p multiplied by p by one. When in, multi in matrix multiplication, when we have two um, things next to each other and they have the same uh, inner indices, so they have the same sort of indices touching, then those indices cancel and we're just left with that of the outer indices. So in fact, we've just got a one by one sort of thing coming out of this. So Y is actually a scalar. And the reason I've introduced this concept of, or this variable y is because we actually know how to differentiate a scalar. So we could actually write out what y is explicitly and then we know how to differentiate that. And that's going to be informative for other cases when we don't actually have a scalar. We're differentiating, let's say, a vector or we're differentiating a matrix. Okay, so let's think about what it actually means to differentiate y with respect to, let's say, x. Well, this is defined as having exactly the same dimensions as our x vector. What are the particular components? Well, the first component is just dy over dx1. The second component is dy over dx2. And then we sort of continue through to dy over dxp. Right, so we have formed a vector, a, row, a sort of column vector of all the differentials of y with respect to each of the arguments of x. So the idea here again is that we have a p by one vector. So that's what it means to differentiate y with respect to x. What does it actually equal in this case? Well, the way in which we could go about finding that is actually writing out what y is explicitly. So y explicitly, if I take the transpose of x and multiply it by a, then assuming that each of these x's and each of these a's are themselves scalar, so x1 through xp is scalar and a1 through ap is scalar, then I can write this out as a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus all the way through to ap xp. And when I write it in this form, it's quite easy to see that y itself is a scalar if all the sort of entries of a and x are themselves scalar because of just sort of multiplying them together and adding them up. Okay, because I've written it in this form, it's actually quite easy to find out the particular entries in our sort of vector of derivatives. So the first entry is we've got sort of dy over dx1, which when I sort of differentiate with respect to x1, I get all these other terms other than the one with x1 cancelling, or they go to zero rather. So I just get dy over dx1 is equal to a1. And similarly for sort of any other entry, it would be sort of dy over dx i would be equal to a i. So I sort of continue through till sort of a or dxp, 
and that's just equal to AP. So actually, in this circumstance, it's quite easy to write out this vector of um, derivatives. It's actually defined as, in this case, or we've actually found it in this case to be A1 all the way through to AP. But this looks similar to what we have up here. In fact, it's just the, make, oh, it's, it's just the vector A. Um, we could have kind of seen that, right? Because this is, if, if we sort of didn't think about X and A as being vectors, if we just thought about them as being scalar, then when I differentiate this thing, then with respect to X, then I'm just gonna kind of get A left over. But we have to be a little bit careful when we're differentiating with respect to a vector because we have to make sure that we get out the, something of the correct dimension. So in this case, it made sense to, uh, for us to sort of write the product or the, the result of this differential as the vector A. Let's think about what it might mean to differentiate with respect to not X, but X transpose. So what does this mean? Well, it's quite easy to sort of carry the, um, our thought processes through to what this might mean. It just means that we, we actually just get a row of our sort of particular entries. So I just get dy over dx1 all the way through to dy over dxp. So in this circumstance, because we've got to have out something which has the same dimensions as the thing we're differentiating with respect to, x primed or x transpose is a one by p vector. So when we differentiate with respect to a one by p vector, we better get out a one by p vector. So this is actually gonna be a1 all the way through to AP, which isn't A, it's a transpose. So notice that this isn't perhaps as easy to see as the first one was, because we were differentiating Y with respect to X primed, and it looks like if we just sort of, sort of did that, and we weren't thinking about these things as being vectors, then we should just get A out. But in fact, that thought process would be misleading because we need to make sure that the thing which we're differentiating with respect to better be the same size as the sort of thing which we get out in the end. So in this case, the answer wasn't A, but it was A transpose. In the next video, we're gonna generalize this idea to think about what it actually means to differentiate sort of more complex things with, with respect to vectors. I'll see you then.